All right, today we're going to talk about the new PID Toolbox tool. We're going to show you how to download it, install it, and how to use it so you can see if the tweaks you're making to your quadcopter are objectively making it fly better or worse. Okay, so before we get into the details, let's just cover what the PID Toolbox does. It allows you to upload two log files into it and then you can see all kinds of data for them. You can see spectrographs, you can see, you can set the extents. We'll get into all the little details of it here near the end, but you can also compare the two log flights and see you know, the different characteristics between the two. So you might have different settings, a different quad, different motors, just any differentials. Um, it's, it's really a tool for a deeper analysis. A lot of the stuff you'll recognize uh, from plasma tree just like the spectrographs and the waterfall diagrams but there's additional tools and it's this is far more interactive and plasma tree doesn't have a comparative tool this you know you can like again upload two logs and compare the differences between the two so this tool was developed by Brian White you can find him typically on the Betaflight black box log review uh, group he's an admin there and uh, you know, in that group, if you're not aware, you can upload your logs and get help and people look at the stuff. Uh, I'm an admin as well with a bunch of other guys. Anyways, he uh, is really interested in MATLAB. He, I guess he has MATLAB at work and this is a MATLAB application. It runs on a MATLAB. You'll see that in a second. And he was gracious enough to develop this whole thing. And then he put it up and made a GitHub repository to make it open source and available and share with the community. This is the GitHub project site for it, and to download it, you can see the instructions down here below. The first thing you need to do is download MATLAB Runtime, so we'll go ahead and click on that. And Brian in the instructions is saying that you should get 2017B, this uh, 9.3 version, so if you have Windows, Linux, or Mac, you download and get that installed. Uh, do note, it's a pretty big download, so don't like download it over your phone. Next, we're gonna go to the release page. So we can just click release page there or go back up to the top and hit releases and go ahead and download the latest version of the PID toolbox. After that is downloaded, you want to open the zip file and you can see there's a PID toolbox v0.12. You can see what I did here is find a spot on your desktop or computer somewhere and just drag that folder into a location that you can make it stick and it's not going to be moved around and things of that nature. If you're on a Windows machine, I recommend going into here and hitting include in library and hit create new library. What that does for this for distribution files only directory is it makes this folder show up here in these libraries up at the top which gives you easy access to click on for when you're saving out CSV files from logs and which I'm going to show you here next. So that's just a little quick tip for Windows users. The executable you'll need is in that directory. And what I found works best is that the, at least in this version, if the CSV files are in that same directory, so we're gonna save those into that directory. There's only a couple files you'll see. It's really just these files are in that directory. So the rest is stuff we're gonna be putting there. And the other thing I did is, you know, just right click on this executable and make a desktop shortcut icon or something of that nature. Okay, after that, what you're gonna need is some CSV files for some logs. So what you can do is open log any log file in Blackbox Explorer and in there there's a export to CSV. Now Brian is working on an update where you'll just be able to hit select a log file directly and it will do this processing for it. It'll make the CSV or whatever it needs to do to get the data. But that's not released yet. You know I probably in the next two, three weeks, month, something, I don't know, that will get released and then you won't have to do this CSV export thing. But for now, you would go up and hit export CSV. So you just open the log file. You don't have to do anything other than open it. Just hit export CSV. Now, when you do click export CSV, if it's a full flight and this was recorded at 4K, so it was recorded at 4,000 frames per second or whatever, 4K in the black box log thing. Brian does recommend sticking with like 2K or less Really, uh, for any analytics you need to do on flight, anything, but if you're in 8K mode, anything you need to look at um, would, you know, a 2K log should be fine. So your logging rate, you wouldn't want to go 1K because that's kind of kind of close for the NyQuest limit and noise and stuff like that. So I would say 2K. This is at 4K, a little excessive. That's what I usually just record at, and these are some older logs. But uh, nevertheless, it does take a while when you hit that CSV thing. That can probably take 
30 to 45 seconds, which seems like an eternity when you're sitting in front of your computer just staring at it. Nevertheless, this will come up with a dialogue. This is where you it's pretty handy to have this library thing right there. So you can just click that and it takes you right to the directory that you want. And then I usually just peel off this double extension thing it does and then hit enter and it puts that CSV file in the directory where the exe is that runs the program. After you have one or two CSV files there you want to take a look at, go ahead and hit select file A and select file B. I already have file A selected. I'm going to go ahead and select B and pick the one I just put there, which I believe is that one. And then I'll go ahead and hit load and run. Now this imports all the data. Again, can take a little bit, but at least you have the little dialog in front of you seeing, you know, you're seeing some progress. Whereas with Black Box Explorer, you, there's no dialogue that comes up. You just kind of got to wait. So just be patient there. Okay, so this is the tool. So now we have everything loaded in there. Just a quick run through. What you have is your traces over here on the roll, pitch, and yaw. This is log file A, log file B. You can see you can turn on different things. So if I wanted to display the D term on here, I can turn on my D term trace. Uh, while that's loading up over here, you can uh, trim your start and end. So say I wanted my logs to be of the same length. I can go ahead and trim this off so that uh, this will end at 141 seconds, just like log A. So you can see that move that back. If you want to get these views larger, obviously adding the D term doesn't really do anything since you can't really see much here. You can go ahead and click in the white space up here and it will increase the size of this. Then you have your tools here where you can zoom in and check out you know, some sub details on a log. Uh, you can pan around. There's this data explorer, so data cursor here. You can click on that. You can pick different spots and it will kind of snap to the data point so I might need to zoom in there a little bit more but I can also then right click here as well and say oh I want to add another data point so you can see it tells me some information there the roll rate degrees per second things of that nature what timestamp that is in the flight and then I can go into here and I can hit uh, create new data and I can pick another point as well there and it will give me another piece of data stream now if I wanted to then you know just clear those out I could hit delete all uh, data tips if I wanted to get this back to small view I need to zoom out till I can get the white area down here again and then just click on that so it's in clicking in this white area or this white area and each one of those will allow you to maximize it and then same thing to minimize it back again so that's kind of the trace templates there in main screen setups and we'll go over this in a second you can have the main traces plus spectrograms. You can have spectrograms only, which is just the spectrograms. You can do step response and spectrograms, but many times the step response isn't running the pitch and yaw for me. And I don't know if that's because there's not enough. You know, I, I really don't do a lot of flips and flights. I do a lot of rolls. So that might be the case where there's just not enough full flips. To actually do a proper step response on this and uh, step responses for full flights aren't the best thing to look at when you're doing steps responses you should really be just you can even just do them line of sight just go out and just do flips and rolls uh, do three four five of them and then land that's the best type of logging for step response graphs not just full flights where you're all over the place but nevertheless and the final thing which is really cool is PID error and spectrographs so with PID error, this gives you the uh, mean deviation of between log A and log B for, again, PID error. And PID error is important because that's how well the quad is tracking on the set point. So when we're talking about feel and how well something does for prop wash, that's all in the PID error. So if we have, you know, the ideal quad has the lowest PID error possible. So if you're making tuning adjustments or filter adjustments, and you know you really want to be looking at your pit error to see if that was an improvement or not and this gives you a objective way to look at that versus just yeah I think it felt better I'm not you know sure obviously there's other things that go along with this they need to be flights of same 
uh, character to be comparing the two and also for just filter adjustments in general or prop wash handling any tweaking you're doing in firmware to see if it's making a difference you know you can't you know fly a log on a windy day and then fly a log on a calm day and then compare those obviously the windy day the pit error is going to be higher because it's blowing it all around it has to fight that you got to take a, a practical look at that and make sure you're you know giving yourself a good apples to apples for this data to be valid don't hyper focus on the information without some basic assumptions being covered so on to the spectrogram side here so some of the things we can look at uh, now in log b i have the gyro pre-filtered gyro data so it's debug mode gyro underscore raw in Betaflight. And if you do have that debug mode recorded, so this is the pre-firmware filtered uh, noise down here for, again, log B, this one was a different debug mode. So this is actually, with this debug mode, this is actually the pre-filtered uh, gyro signal for roll. Just This was a debug mode. I think it was dynamic underscore uh, LPF, and that's what that is in that debugs it's actually this access pre-filtered but this one's more the typical and if you do do a gyro underscale debug this will calculate what your late filter latency is so it's looking at the raw data and then it's looking at the gyro and then d term and then total so you can see my calculated total filter latency is 3.5 milliseconds which is pretty good uh, I will drop a link below for what that's doing. Brian sent me because I asked the question. Honestly, I haven't reviewed it yet, but you could just look in the logs too to see if that if you're getting these kind of the same numbers. What's a little difficult is these are some absolute numbers where all the filtering, at least in Betaflight, is dynamic now, so it's not that simple anymore. Everything's moving around all the time, so it's not one number, but. Uh, Nevertheless, this you know maybe averages it out or gives you an, an idea. On the spectrographs, you have drop downs. You can look at the gyro, pre gyro, pit error, so on and so forth. Motors. You can look at pre determ filtering trace. So with that, it's calculating it. This software is calculating what the determ would be without filtering, and then Betaflight logs provide you what the determ actually is. So a lot of people ask what that looks like. That's pretty cool. You can check that out. We're going to look at a couple things here that you're probably not used to looking at. One is set point and the other is pit error. So let's go hit those two. We're going to hit refresh here and then let it go ahead and calculate and figure those out. Okay, after it's run its calculations, which can take some time for 4K logs, so you definitely want to get your logging rate down to 2K. Uh, you know, you can't really see much here, so let's make some adjustments. One of the things that uh, Brian's really thought of everything here, you can click these little dialogues here and take your scaling down from you know some higher value like a thousand hertz or something and it'll take you down you can just see the sub 100 hertz uh, information there's throttle along the bottom so this is at a given throttle position and this is the frequency of basically the vibration that you're seeing and then this is a again this is a heat map graph on that you can see down below here just some other general data that I didn't cover yet this is throttle percentage of the flight so you can kind of see where you're generally your characteristic of where you, you spend the most time in throttle. You can adjust the heat maps here. So if you go down like 0.5 and 0.5, that will make the yellows a little darker um, to kind of make that really stand out. And that's how we'll see now you can see some more variation here between the two. So we're kind of looking at pit error from flight A and pit error from flight B. You can see in general, uh, flight A, there was less pit error. This was uh, performing a little bit better. Uh, there's some other things you can do here. You can change the heat map type. So I like this one, the red, linear red. Just go ahead and pick that. It gives you just a different presentation, maybe a little easier to see certain things. Uh, and honestly, I am not sure what the stick thing does yet. Uh, I usually have my max uh, roll rate at 1,000 degrees per second. So you know, go ahead and set that, whatever your max roll rates are. I'm not sure what that does yet. I would have to ask, sorry. The other thing you can do is after you have set point and the heat map run for set point, you can also then after that, you can change this to be PID error minus set point. So set point, obviously that's your commanded rotation or roll rate. So when you're looking at error, that's not an error. That's just the actual motion you're commanding. So you can you know, go ahead and take the PID error and subtract that out. So we're going to do that here now. Uh, the thing you have to do is you have to run the spectrum first 
on set point and then you can set it to error minus set point. I guess it has to do the calculations in the background first. So what's this showing me? This is basically showing me all the motion of my quadcopter that is uncommanded. So you can see on this log down here, this is basically prop wash right here and this is at full throttle. This is really the D term amplifying some noise and vibrations and feeding back. That's what that is, just knowing logs and things of that nature. So one thing I'm going to do there, or I've already done, is I have my um, my TPA, which is really now TDA in Betaflight 4.0. At uh, TPA throttle P attenuation is rally now throttle D attenuation. So I have that set to above 85%. It's going to chop my D term down uh, quite a bit to to get rid of that. Uh, again, for comparing prop wash between one flight and the other, you can see flight A is doing better than flight B in that scenario. And that can that's also reflected over here. You can see these blue bars are higher than the orange bars. So I switched to the spectrogram only view just to switch it up a little bit. And then I turned on the D-term pre-filtered and the D-term post-filter. This is for flight A. Uh, this is roll, pitch, roll, pitch for flight B. And the other thing it needs to do is change the spectrogram there to um, 1. I, if it was before it was 0.5 so you can change that to 1.5 or something and take a look at that. So it's an interesting result here and this is the sub 100 Hertz. You can see post filtering the there's more noise sub 100 Hertz in post filter D term than it is in pre. Now we need to keep in mind this is calculated off of the gyro. What it, I mean it's just really the derivative so it's just the slope of whatever the gyro is and then this is coming from black box. So yeah that's interesting. Let's look at above 100 Hertz and see what's going on. So taking the heat map down to 1 you can see the pre filter D term you can see we have noise way up here on roll and, and pitch, it's kind of just broad spectrum everywhere. And then in post, it's cleared out way up here pretty well, but it's almost like it's trans, translated down to here. And I've seen that in logs. So that's something I honestly have to think about some more. It's almost like it translates, it as it's filtering, it translates that, that high frequency vibration down to lower frequency vibration, which is not ideal. Same thing up here. Now this one, uh, this is quite a mess up here in the pre-filter uh, D term and then that gets all cleaned up and it's about one to one down here. So some more things, some interesting results I'm seeing there. I um, have to explore that some more and, and see what's the, uh, what's the best thing that you want there. And this just changing back to a more customary, which you're probably used to seeing, uh, color palette for these kind of things. It's interesting, you don't see that as much on the gyro trace, so keeping in mind this yaw is really the pre-filter for this roll here. You can see there's a bunch of noise down low here, a bunch of noise down low here yet. Same thing here. Now, this is B, again, a bunch of noise here, a bunch of noise here. It's just, you know, that throttle band is totally getting removed and anything up here is getting removed. you got to keep these heat maps at the same density basically to to be able to compare this to that same thing up here you can see it's not really adding noise down low but you saw before on for the D term it does look like it was now again get to vet that a little bit more one is calculated but it, the, again the calculation is really simple it's just the gyro the the slope of the gyro is the raw D term and then the filtered one comes from the black box log so yeah, I'll have to look at that. That was interesting. So that's the kind of cool stuff you can find in these kind of tool. Kind of pick things apart and, and see what you can do. Specifically, the PID error to me is a, is a pretty big deal to be comparing that for flight field characteristics and for... Um, because if you can get for flight field characteristics, for prop wash performance, for all kinds of stuff. Because honestly, if you can get your PID error minimized, then feel is just... Uh, the latency between your transmitter to the flight controller, which there's a bunch of stuff there, uh, especially with FR Sky and OpenTX, and just your rates. You know, you can adjust that based on your rates for, for fuel. So, okay, that was it. Thanks again to Brian for you know all his time to pull this together for us and making it available. 
I know he's continuing to work on it. It would be really nice when you could just select the log and hit go. I think he's done with that actually already. He just wants to vet it in himself some more to make sure he's worked out the bugs. If you do find any issues with it, as always with a get any open source project, just go to GitHub and go to the Issues tab and go ahead and get that on Brian's radar and hopefully work through with them. He was looking at uh, translating this over to Octave, which is an open source platform, to get more of a collaborative environment, but there's a couple uh, things that are Octave's a little slower for, for graphic, uh, uh, displaying of graphics and things of that nature, but I know it's on his radar to, to do that if, it, if he could, if he can work out the performance issues there. Bunch of links are below. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.